I am just going to give a big whoop whoop for Friday. I have not been this excited for the weekend in a really long time. And I think that the reason why I'm so excited for the weekend this weekend, hello Tiggy, hello Lauren, is the simple fact that um, I did really good about going to the gym this week. So I get to sleep in tomorrow and um, I'm super excited about that. I am just like, I'm, I'm ready for a very nice relaxing weekend. Now, I know it's question and answer day and you're gonna be asking me the questions and I'm gonna be giving you the answers. But I want your opinion on the nails that I got yesterday because these are totally outside of my comfort zone. And I did a poll on um, my page asking like, hey, which one do you like best? And this is the, the style and the color that was picked, but I think that this is a little bit more neon than um, the than the color that I showed on the picture, which I'm okay with because I think it's, you know, I think it's fun. Sandy says it's cute. And I, you know what? And I was like, I left um, the nail place. Lauren has little faces with hearts. Ellie says it looks fun. And that's kind of how I'm going with it because I get, they are very neon. Yes, they are. But I find myself getting into a, um, into a rut sometimes. And especially like when it comes to my nails, I'll be like, I'm either going to do blue or black. And then I go back to blue and then I do black again. And so I really wanted to push myself today or yesterday and do something totally outside of my comfort zone. So after my, my manicure, I was like, I was at a Starbucks and they're so sweet. And I asked the lady behind the counter, I'm like, what do you think about my nails? And she's like, oh, those are really cool. And I'm like, okay, then I like them. And so even me, um, <laughs> Claire says, oh, you'll be able to see you in the dark, just about. But, and here's the interesting thing that I want to tell you about. And if you all have any questions, just interrupt me at any time and start asking your questions. But I sit here every single day and I try to give you the encouragement to um, have your own self-expression and to do whatever you want. And to, if you want to try something new, do it. And just so for a reality check, just so you know that we, um, we all have the same insecurities. I do the exact same thing that you do. You know, sometimes I'll look down and I'll be like, oh man, I really blew it. Man, these are really yellow. They're really neon. I don't know if I'm going to like these for the next three weeks. And then I'm like, you know what, Lonnie? It, they're not bad. They're, they're, there's nothing wrong with them other than the fact that they're outside of your comfort zone and they um, are different and they're bright and they're, they're kind of like, uh, kind of like, I, I hate to put a label on it, but it, they're kind of like, you know, a youthful kind of like trend. So I am proving to myself that if I can do it, you can do it. If I can do something way outside of my comfort zone, just to prove that I can, this is again, my living encouragement to do the same thing um, that I'm asking you to do. So please don't ever think like I sit up here and I just like, you need to do this and you need to do that. And then I turn around and just cave to my own insecurities because that's not the way it is. Now, before I go, I do want to give a, um, a mention to the um, trend right now on TikTok because I have been very vocal here lately about TikTok and about, um, and about how sometimes it's just really hard to like get behind some trends. And a lot of it seems to be sometimes in a very negative kind of context. Not right now. If you're on TikTok or if you're going to be wondering about what I'm talking about, I tagged um, a video down below or I have a video down below, but I'm all about the chicken wars right now. And I am living and breathing for the chicken wars. And I'm going to explain to you really quick what those are. And I'm, I, if you're on TikTok, I'm sure you've seen it, but I'm going to explain to you. And it's just this really cute thing where it showed this farmer walking 
and he had all these chickens behind him and he was just basically like yeah bring it on and then another farmer with chickens was like yeah you know what we're gonna you know beat us up or, or you know they're like challenging other like they're having like a little chicken war and now it has gone to the point where um and the one that i like the best is the one where the guy with the cows he was all like, yeah, we're going to go Chick-fil-A on this. And I just thought it was really cute. I think it's really fun. And it's like, if I'm going to sit here and I'm going to just be like, oh, you know what? There's just so much negativity on social media. Um, I'm also going to say when I find something really fun. And right now I am all about the chicken wars. And it's just fun. And personally, I think some of those chickens look like they could win over some of the other chickens, but hopefully they don't actually start rumbling because that would make me sad when chickens were fighting. So, but I think it's fun. Okay. Um, Jerry says, what other social media are um, connected to? I see you looking at another device other than TikTok. Um, this is YouTube. So I have YouTube here on my main camera and then I have TikTok on my phone. So I am, um, I do both. And um, my YouTube is actually recorded. So anytime, like this entire session, this entire um, conversation is recorded and put on my page. And because I've had people ask before, they're like, who are you responding to? I don't see those questions. And that's because I have one platform on um, my phone and another one on my camera, which is going through my laptop, which is going into my computer. And so, yeah, I, I thought it was really, um, I think it's really cool. And I've, I'm trying to figure out ways how to incorporate other channels. And I know that I can multi-stream, but what I'm really worried about is the, the quality of the content because I wanna keep it kind of like really cool and, and intimate. And if I start having too many other channels, then it's gonna be like, well, who's saying what? You know, where'd that come from? This and that and this. So I do this, um, I do this um, Monday through Friday. All right, Ash wants to know any, um, do you have any tips for deciding on tattoos? Yes, and I 100% where, how I pick out my tattoos is by how I'm feeling. Because, you know, I don't go, I don't trend chase for one thing. Like if a tattoo is really super trendy, that's, that's fine and dandy. If I like the style, I'll do it, but I don't get a new tattoo specifically to follow a trend. But what I do when deciding a tattoo is I try to figure out where am I at in life? Because this tattoo is going to be my timestamp. It's going to be a, a reminder for the rest of my life where I was at this moment. So depending on how I'm at, you know, where am I at? How am I feeling? You know, am I, am I feeling strong? Am I feeling weak? Am I feeling encouraged? Do I, am I sad? Am I happy? So I figure out my basic emotion. And then whatever my basic emotion is, is I do a, a visual um, representation of that emotion. For example, like when I um, quit my corporate job and I was super scared, but I was super determined to make my platform work, I tattooed a um, Rosie the Riveter, my, my logo on my calf, because it just represents to me on a daily basis that I have to be a strong woman. And so it's, it's that constant representation of how I was feeling, what emotion I want to have, is how I pick my tattoos. Now, it, they don't always have to have a huge emotional, um, a, a huge emotional message behind it, because your message could be just nothing more than like, hey, I was in a really good spot, and I thought that this was funny. Henceforth, my Hello Kitty tattoo. You know, it's like... It doesn't always have to be like monumental, but for some reason, whatever you're feeling for that day, um, that is how I pick out a tattoo and that's how I suggest you pick out your tattoo. All right, um, let's see here. Good morning, Connie. Speaking of new tattoos, Connie just got one on her back and it was super cool and I really liked that one. All right, so another question um, that, let's see here, Courtney says, or that you were obsessed with the Pink Panther when you were a kid. <gasps> Did you already get your Pink Panther tattoo? I think that is so cool. And I remember being completely obsessed with the Pink Panther. 
and I love the cartoons. I love the movies and I could totally get behind a Pink Panther um, tattoo. So one of the questions that I had got asked is, um, what is the strangest dream I have ever had? And I, no, you had the opportunity to go outside earlier. Don't you give me that look. She's over, Indy's right there, and she's like, I went out now. And what my dog does is that she will sit at the back door, and then I have to open the door, but she doesn't go outside. Mm -mm. She sits inside and looks outside. And I'm just like, no, you've had your opportunity. You've had your looky-looing, and now you're just going to have to relax. Um, Jennifer says, I love your vest. Thank you so so much this is um free people of course and this is one of the things that i mentioned yesterday about a waistcoat which is actually a button down vest and one of the ways i told you you can wear it is um with nothing under it but like a little bralette and that's what i'm doing today so the strangest dream that i've ever had is i would say it's a reoccurring dream that i have and ever since that I was ever since I was a kid, I've always dreamt of seeing a plane crash. And I am pretty sure that that has a huge meaning. In fact, let's figure it out why we were on here. What does a plane crash in your dreams mean? <laughs> Hold tight, talk amongst each other. What does Oop. If I could type, this would be so much easier. What does plane crash dream me let's figure this one out okay um yeah you know what kind of like um richie valens but it's just i'll explain some of the the dreams because they are so like vivid in my mind still what kind of breed is your dog life with me i have a pit bull um she is 74 four pound pit bull who is about a year old and she is the biggest baby in the world because she doesn't like to go outside by herself because she saw a squirrel once and then um, we have a little rabbit that comes in our yard every once in a while and she's terrified of it okay what does um, dreams about plane crashes are symbolic of your emotions during your waking life if you dream about a plane crash it's likely to represent some sort ooh it's likely to represent some form of inner term turmoil, according to Allo Dream. These dreams are said to represent the battles going on between your conscious and your unconscious mind. That is, um, that is interesting because I can totally relate to that. Um, oh, you have too. So you totally know what kind of um, temperament they have. I mean, pit bulls are so misrepresented in their demeanor. It is insane. Yes, they can be, um, they can be mean, but on the 99% of the time, they are the sweetest dogs ever. Um, oh, Ellie says, I have dreams very often about my ex-husband cheating on his girlfriend with me. Okay, we're going to get back to that one, Ellie because I've had some kind of a similar dream and I always wonder why I dream about my ex-husband. But let me describe how I see these dreams and I've had them ever since I was a kid. And you know, I've always, I've always mentioned that I've had a very non-easy childhood. Well, I remember having a dream and we were back in the old house that we lived in when I was in Encinitas. And I remember in my dream, I was standing in the kitchen and it was an older house, so the refrigerator was just kind of like randomly just where it was. And I remember seeing the plane crash, and I actually dove behind the refrigerator, and in my dream, I could feel like the heat just going by because the plane had just crashed. And it is just it was such a realistic dream that I can still remember it today. I can still like sit there and feel like the heat rushing by me. So my dreams have been super, super vivid in regards to the whole like watching a plane crash. And I just had one not too recently, just like maybe last week. Um, it wasn't as big a plane. And here's the thing, it's, it's like the planes change sizes. And I think that maybe what it is is that um, Maybe it depends on how much of a um, turmoil I'm going 
in on my personal life depends on the size of the plane. Because I've seen like full on commercial planes um, like going down in my dreams. And then yesterday or the last week, it was like a little like a single engine plane. So maybe my, my turmoils are getting less. Um, I can feel teeth rattling in my mouth like a mouthful of Tic Tacs. Oh, um, is your, oh, okay. There's a very, okay. I have a reoccurring dream about since I was a kid about losing my teeth. Okay. We're going to get to that one. Um, Tiggy says I have a tornado dream when I am stressed. They are so disturbing with lots of storm phobia. Yes. Now Tiggy straight out, you can already tell that that is just like your, your emotions are just like going, um, crazy. And, um, that would be a tornado now. Okay. Um, Anything that has to do with water is your emotions. So if you see water, because I have a comment here about a tidal wave. Now, if you see water that's calm, that means you're in a calm spot. If you see like um, water and it's like a raging sea, that means you have a lot of um, emotional turmoil. So you can kind of gauge how you are doing emotionally if you dream about water by how the water is um, acting. Okay, so we have a couple of interesting ones I want to get to. Um, Julie says, are you scared to fly? Sorry, I missed you saying that. No, see, that's just the thing is, is I, I am not scared to fly because it's not me in the plane. It's me seeing the plane come down. And it has been so reoccurring that it just, it, I get anxiety if I'm driving around and I see a plane fly by and I won't look at it because I'm scared that if I look at it, it's going to fall. And so I'm not scared to be in the dream, in the plane. I'm scared to watch planes fly by because I've had so many of those reoccurring dreams. Okay. Um, why dream about X? Oh, okay. So now let me just put a little caveat on this one because we're, we're talking about um, dreaming about your ex and it's saying that it's unresolved feelings about your ex. Now, mind you right now, I dream about my ex and there's no unresolved feelings of kindness or niceness. <gasps> Connie, thank you so much for my little super. I appreciate that very much. Um, I have unresolved feelings for my ex, but they're not kind feelings. So this makes sense. But it says, if you still have feelings for your ex, they may appear in your dreams because dreams can re replicate reality. However, your real world feelings towards your ex do not necessarily have to be romantic ones. See, I knew that that's what they were going to say. It says, you may also experience frustration, rage, sadness, or jealousy. And I think if you are dreaming about your ex cheating with you with his girlfriend, you probably worried about him cheating on you when you were together. And it's so weird. When I dream about my ex-husband, it always leaves me with a feeling of just like loathing, like, like it's a different me that was with him. So I always, if I dream about my ex, it was, um, it was a, it, it always makes me stop and kind of recalibrate. Like, how is my energy now? How is my self-confidence now? Because it's always a constant reminder that I went through an experience where that confidence got just beat up on a, on a daily basis. So, um, so yeah, that is 100% it. Um, Ellie says, I still love him and we get along. You know what? Then maybe what you're, maybe, okay, so let me just throw this out to you. And this is just me spitballing here. But maybe you have that dream because you want the best for him and you're afraid he's going to mess it up. And you're like, that would be the worst thing for him. So maybe that's just, there's something deep in your subconscious that is, um, that is, you know, coming up about him, whether it's again, a good thing or a bad thing. Now let's talk about the teeth. Cause I'm really curious about that one. Why do you lose teeth in my dreams? Okay, here we go. 
Um, teeth falling out are association with loss and important life changes. The dream could include that you're dealing with some kind of loss, like an abrupt end to a relationship or a job change. So it is, again, it is either a loss or an important life change. So if you are maybe like experiencing um, something coming up that's a huge change for you, you can have a dream about, um, you know, losing your teeth. And it's really kind of cool, like the whole like, um, like meditation. And I, I know sometimes I'll do kind of like a little tarot card reading for myself. And it's funny how people always get really scared of the death card. And that is not necessarily a representation of us passing, but that's a representation of rebirth. I mean, when you pull that card, it's because you can, you're, you're starting over. It's kind of like a forest fire where a forest fire will go and it will burn up the forest and then it has regrowth. And that is what the, um, the death card in a tarot card deck represents. So sometimes I think we are too literal with our representations of our dreams and any sort of signs that the universe is giving us. So what I always do and what I always encourage you to do is if you are having a dream, don't look at it so much literally for what you're dreaming, but how you feel during the dream, how you feel when you wake up from your dream and all of that stuff. And it is amazing. Life with me. Nope. You can change the subject. It's a sorry to change the subject, but with your pit bull, but is she aggressive to other dogs? Also, what type of pit bull? Thanks for doing this. Absolutely. All right. Um, she, so just so you know, I've had pit bulls for a very long time. My grandma had a pit bull. My sister had pit bulls. Um, and Indy is not my first pit bull. Now, um, with that said, I, we got her and she was an incredibly large little puppy, much larger than, um, Liberty, who was my pit bull before her. And we had a DNA test done and she came back as a hundred percent American bully. So I did not realize that there are actually off, off, off shoots of pit bull types of pit bulls. So she is a hundred percent American bully and she is not aggressive towards other dogs. I mean, she kind of like reads their cues. So if we're walking along and the dog ignores her, then she's just like, ah, you know, whatever. She's curious about them. She likes to sit down and watch them walk by like, ooh, wow, what is that? But she's not trying to hurt them. Now, if the other dog is showing any aggression towards her, then she is 100% like, you're not going to mess with me and you're not going to mess with my mom or my family. So she's very protective that way. And she's more reactionary than um, aggressive. Now, through having pit bulls, there are definitely two types of pit bulls. There's the, um, there's the alpha and then there's the, there is, I mean, there, you either have it like, um, you either have a fighting dog or you had a bait dog. I, I mean, and to say it in terms that just make my skin crawl, but you either are having those dogs that have those kind of like tendencies towards, um, aggression, or you have the dogs that just don't, they're not aggressive. And, um, <laughs> then um, that is, she is definitely the non-aggressive type. Now, have you, um, are you the um, Amazon guy, the UPS guy, or the FedEx guy? Game on. She does not like them. And I cannot figure out what it is about a delivery guy that she just doesn't like. In fact, they don't even have to stop at the house. They can just drive down the street. And Indy's like, you better not stop here. And I'm like, Indy, stop it. And our poor um, Amazon guy, he actually texts me every time before he delivers a package. And he's like, hey, I'm going to be at your house in 15 minutes. Can you make sure your dog's locked up? And I'm like, well, for one thing, she's never out front. But yes, I understand how aggressive she sounds. And yes, she is locked up. Um, let's see, have any of your others been aggressive? Yes, I did have one. Her name was Kalua, and she was a red nose pit bull. And we, she was a lot for me to handle. It was right after my divorce, and she showed more signs of being 
a more aggressive dog. And my sister actually ended up taking her and keeping her because she had, um, her husband at that time had more experience with dogs like that. And they were able to give her a full life in a way that she wasn't locked up or anything like that. So yeah, no, I've had had that experience where I'm like, wow, this dog is incredibly aggressive and not by my doing. So, um, I, I, I don't know if it was so much the dog or just the situation of where the, how the dog was raised, because like I said, I was going through a, um, I was going through a divorce and I was not mentally and emotionally there for her during those like younger time months of her life. So I'm going to put some, res I'm going to put the majority of the responsibility on me that I was not able to give her the kind of training and attention she needed. And it was more of like the perfect storm. Let's just put it that way. Um, I have a previous bait dog. She loves people terrified of animals to the point, um, attacks from fears, um, wants to attach. I don't let her, obviously she just has to, um, to reactive. Yes. See, now here's the thing. It's, it's like Indy, if, if I put Indy outside and she sees a squirrel, she won't, you know, I have to go out with her when she goes outside. Now you look at Indy and she's a beautiful dog. I mean, she's, she's muscular, she's strong. And she, when she looks at you and she's like, got that serious look on your face, her face, she looks intimidating. But then when you're like, Indy, go outside. She's like, no, I need a buddy. Will you go outside with me? Because I saw a squirrel last week and it's kind of scary. And I don't want to go to the bathroom with a squirrel out there because the squirrel might attack me. And that is what that dog is. That dog is not what she looks like. That dog is the simple fact that squirrels scare her. And the simple fact that she is scared of things makes me more cautious that she's not going to react out of fear. So I always try to be encouraging. I try to give her positive reinforcement when she does big girl things all by herself. And again, I think that this is a product of her environment because I got her after I quit my corporate job. I'm always here. Robert's always here or Brandon's always here. So she's very accustomed to having somebody here and doing things on her own is a little scary for her. And she's come a, a long ways. I mean, she's come an incredibly long ways because when we first started training her to walk, she was like, this world is so incredibly scary. I don't like it. And now that she's older and she has that confidence, she's like, yeah, you know what? This is pretty fun. I, I, I'm okay with this. So I've never had a dog like that, but that's okay. Each dog is different. And I have to give her the needs that she needs in order to flourish and be the best behaved dog as possible. And that's what a dog owner does. You know, a dog owner is that person who sits there and be like, hey, no two dogs are the same, but I'm going to treat you the way that you need to be treated. Now, okay, so I live on the back of my house is a street. And then like, there's no houses directly behind me. So it's my house, street, or street, street. So there's like a lane, a lane, four lanes, four lanes that separate me um, from the other house. And these people, I think it's a husky, but these people literally keep their dog locked on the side of the house. And I, it drives me crazy because the dog barks. And you know what? I'm not mad at the dog. I am so ain't so upset at these people for one thing, just sticking their dog on the side of the house. Like it's a freaking trash can. It's not, it's a dog that needs attention. It needs love. And I don't understand. And here's my Lonnie rant of the day, but I don't understand why people get pets and just lock them on the side of the yard and forget about them. So I, I, every time I hear that, um, I always like, I always look at Indy and I'm like, see how lucky you are this is never this would never happen to you and she's like yeah i know this is that's pretty scary over there so it's just i don't know if you have a dog out there just give it love and um give it the attention that it needs and i see so much positivity on that on on social media and i absolutely love it and then i also see the other one that breaks my heart when you see a little doggy that's been abused and i'm just like oh why do you do that 
Lauren says, I have the same thing with my staffy um, cross Jack Russell, and she's the, got the meanest bark ever. Yeah, well, you know what? Jack Russells are a lot of energy. And so, um, but yeah, no, they, Indy has a bark on her like no other. But here's the thing, and I, again, um, I, again, am not a dog expert, but her demeanor when she's in the house and she thinks she's protecting her family is totally different than Liberty ever had. Liberty was always like, yeah, you know what? If I have to, I'll get up and protect you. She was a great dog, but she was not like that super protective dog where Indy's like, I will destroy if you come into this house and try to hurt my family. So again, being what she is and the, the breed that she is, I am extremely cautious of that. And she's super strong. So if somebody comes to the door and Indy's like going bananas at the door, I will walk around and I will either go through the backyard or through the garage because I don't want to make that error of opening up the door and then having her rush by me and then having a situation to where my dog is jeopardized. So again, it's just about being a, a conscientious dog owner. Lauren says, Ben just um, finished war, so I'll probably um, see you on Insta later. Oh, okay. Je been just finished. Oh, just finished work. Okay. I didn't see the K or there should have been a K there and I couldn't figure out what that one was. So that is my little, um, that's my little, um, my little preaching about dogs and pit bulls and all of that good stuff. So I had somebody ask me, here's another question. Um, what is my favorite season? And I would have to say, even though I have been born, um, I was born in August. So I have the fire sun. I think my favorite season is winter because I really like the fashion. I love Christmas and it is just kind of a warm, kind of fuzzy feeling kind of months for me. So my favorite season is winter. I would say either winter or summer. I'm not a really big fan of spring or fall. It seems just like it can't make up its mind. So I am always like, just like, it bugs me when the seasons run into each other. And I, what I mean by that is, you know, Courtney, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like if it's, um, if it's Thanksgiving and it's 85 degrees outside, that bugs me because I want it to be nice and cold outside so I can make a Thanksgiving dinner. Um, and it's also too, like it's June and it feels like winter. It's like overcast it's cool so what bugs me again is when the seasons kind of um all blend in together and i am not a fan so if you're out there mother nature get your act together keep your seasons where they need to be because this little like blending of the seasons just isn't working for me so i had somebody ask me an interesting question and i want you all to think about this too because it's kind of interesting and i've never had this question asked before but it said, if you could take a character out of one movie and put that character into another movie, what would it be? And I instantly, it, the, the answer came to me so quickly. It was pretty fun because I didn't even have to think twice about it. But I would have taken, um, <laughs> I would take Forrest Gump out of his movie and I would put it in Aliens 2. And I would have Forrest Gump fighting the alien um, on the, you know, that planet. And I think that that alien wouldn't, wouldn't stand a chance. All right. For one thing, instead of Courtney Weaver, um, saving the little girl, Forrest Gump would be saving Jenny. And so he would like get all strapped into that big robot and he'd be like, you stay away from her, you bitch. And then he ran so much. He'd just be like, run, 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 run. And then the alien would get really tired. And then, you know what? He would kill it then. So I would take Forrest Gump out of his movie and put him in Aliens 2. And I think that that would be an excellent movie. Now, here's the question that I have for you is um, I want you to tell me what movies you would mesh together. So that way I can kind of get an idea what you think. I mean, there's, and it's uh, like I said, it's a question that I had never been asked before. And I thought it was a really cool question. Tiggy says, did you ever read the Forrest Gump novel, He Goes um, on the Space Shuttle? 
shut up. Are you kidding? For one thing, I didn't even know that there was a novel. I did not know that that was a book. So there you go. I learned something new. And the simple fact that Forrest, that I didn't know this, and that Forrest Gump went on the space shuttle and goes in with my whole ideology, uh, my whole idea that Forrest Gump should have gone to space and fought um, the alien on um, Aliens 2. It makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. All right. I don't see anybody answering my question. So I think you're either being shy or you're thinking about it. And if you're being shy, don't be shy. Just give me your, your answer because there is no right or wrong answer. Tiggy says it was a book before it was adapted into the movie. He went with a monkey. It's just getting better. Oh my gosh. I, again, I had no idea. I, and it's like, that is just so cool. And I know that there's some books like, um, like Jurassic Park was a book before it was a movie. Um, I read all of the Hobbits or the Hobbit book and all of the Lord of the Rings before I saw the movies. See, that's where my kind of reading is. My reading is definitely more, um, I, my favorite types of books is, um, hello, BB. My favorite types of books are like, um, thriller books, like scary books. I love Stephen King. I grew up, um, reading all of his books. Um, and so I like those kind of like books that are very, um, that are, they're kind of creepy and scary or they have a monster or they go to space. And so I know my niece is now, she is, um, she's all into those like, um, romantic novels. And I'm like, dude, you can't read those with kids in the house. So I've never, never been into one of those. Um, love scary books. Yes. Scary books are the way to go. Okay. Courtney, no, Tiggy said, no, Courtney says I would put Beatrix kiddo from Kill Bill in place of Annie in misery. <gasps> that would be cool. Could you imagine that? In fact, you know what? What was I watching? Oh, I was watching a show the other day and the mom on the show reminded me just of that, um, character. Of Kathy Bates on Misery. Um, it says, have you read 112263, one of my favorite Stephen King books? No, but if it's that good, I will pick it up and read it because I am always wanting to read a book. I mean, it makes me sound like I don't know how to read, but I love reading books. Um, but I just, I have to schedule more me time and I know I need to, but, um, I would, I always say I'm going to buy a book and I'm going to make sure I read before I go to bed and then I never do it. So I will definitely, okay, I will, um, I will definitely do that. Okay. So, okay. Kindle, I absolutely could read off of my iPad, but I like to turn the pages. You know what? We all know how old I am and we all know that, um, I, there's just some things I like to do the old fashioned way. And that old fashioned way is I like to read a book. I like to turn the page. I like to just be like, what? And then you look back or you just be like, um, I don't know. There's just some, I, I have the capability of reading it on my iPad. I just choose not to. And it's like, I don't know. It's like, sometimes I think like life is so on demand as it is there's just some things in life that I just like to do the old fashioned way, because I mean, you have to look at it when, when, when I was a kid, if you wanted to talk to somebody, you called them. And if they weren't home, you didn't talk to them. And, or, you know, if you wanted to write somebody a letter, you had to write them a letter and wait for it to get mailed, wait for them to get it, wait for them to write you back and then come back. And, and I know that it's called progress, but sometimes there are just certain things in life that, um, that are, that are cool to kind of keep at a slower pace. 
Love finding a chubby hole. No, a cubby. I'm like, what's a chubby hole? Love finding a cubby hole to read in and a good book. Yes. Okay. But you have to take that and you put it with winter and you have yourself the perfect scenario because if it's super hot outside and I don't have my air conditioner on or something and I'm all like sticky, I'm just like, Ugh, I cannot sit still long enough to concentrate on reading. Um, yeah, absolutely. Ann. okay. Courtney says, if you could have chosen a different name than you have, which is amazing, by the way, what would it have chosen? Bonus, were you named after anyone? Okay, here, Courtney, that's a really good question. And um, I don't think I would, I, I know now I would not change my name. As a kid, it was kind of hard having that name because nobody had ever heard of Alani before. And I remember I would be like in high school and we would go to a party and my best friend in high school, in middle school, was, um, her name was Lisa. So it's really super easy. We'd be at a party. We'd see cute boys. And they'd be like, hey, what are your names? And she'd be like, my name is Lisa. And then I'd be like, I'm Lonnie. They'd be like, hi, Lisa and Linda. And I'm like, no, that's not what I said. My name's not Linda. It's Lonnie. Oh, okay, Bonnie. I'm like, again, clearly, that is not what I said. My name is Lonnie. They're like, oh, cool, Connie. And I'm like, forget it. Just call me whatever you want because you're not getting my name. Now, um... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, I like that one, Courtney. So does my name have any meaning? Yes. My mom thought she was making up my name um, when she was pregnant with me. And it's a combination of two names. And it's for my grandmother and my dad. Because my grandma's name was Leela, and then my dad's name was Don, but everybody called him Donnie. So um, she dropped the D and then added the L from my grandmother's name and came up with Lonnie. So my name is for both my grandmother and my dad. And being older and um, where I am today, I absolutely love it. And she didn't spell it with an E on the end. If you spell my name L-O-N-N-I-E, that's typically a man, that's how men spell it. My name is spelled L-O-N-N-I. So not only is it um, different, but she spelt it the way she wanted to. And my sister's name was Vicky, and she did not put an E on the end of that name either. So it was V-I-C-K-I and then L-O-N-N-I. And um, I absolutely love it. Now, Courtney also asked if I had had a daughter, what, what would I have named her? And I would have named her Dawn. Because again, my dad's name was Don, but I would have done it D-A-W-N. Or I would have just done it Don like him. But I was going to give um, my girl a boy name because everybody thought I was a boy. I thought it was, I think it's really cool that I have a name that you really can't gender me because you don't know if I'm a man or a woman when you just hear my name. And the funny story behind that one is, is that Apparently, neither could the U.S. government figure out if I was male or female because I got a draft notice when I turned 18. And my dad actually had to send my birth certificate to them to prove that I was a girl so that I didn't have to register for um, the draft. And I still have that notice. I still have the draft notice today. My dad saved it and framed it because he thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever heard of. And I'm like, I don't think that's very funny, Dad. And he's like, yes. But I like a name, uh, again, an, like Courtney says, an androgynous name that you can't gender right away. And I think it's really cool because I think that um, we get stereotyped a lot over our names, believe it or not. Um, so Connie says, my actual name is Cornelia. Connie is a nickname. Used to hate it, love it now because it means strong rock. You know, that's a beautiful name, Connie. And, I, and that's just the whole thing. It's, it's like when we're kids, we try so hard to, um, gosh, I guess as kids, maybe we're told or we're taught that we're supposed to, um, that we're supposed to fit in because as a kid, it was really hard to stand out. And I think that that's something that we need to teach each other or teach our children at a younger age that it's okay to be different. And it's okay not to go to Disneyland and find your name like the little license plate. I was always so 
bummed about that every time I went like on a field trip at school and all the kids had their like their little two dollars um their little two dollars that they were going to buy something at the gift store and they all ran to the little license plate and they found their names there was like Tom Dick there was Jane there was Mary and then I'm like where's the Lonnie's and there was never a little license plate and it was just it was always so disappointing as a kid um, let's see here. Okay. Courtney asks, um, oh, Danny says, yes, my real name is Dan. Ooh, Danny. I love it. I love it. I didn't see the I on the end there. there. Okay. Courtney says, what are your three absolute essential nightstand items? My phone, water, and my speaker, my Alexa speaker, because I have to have music. I have to have water and my phone is never far away. So those are my three essential nightstands. Courtney says, I was named after Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner's daughter. Oh, really? That is really cool. You know, that is, um, Natalie Wood was beautiful. Um, let's see here, Courtney, doo, doo, doo. but two ends, yes. Oh, oh, okay, because it's showing here, it's only showing one end, it's not two ends in your name. Um, doo, doo, doo. Yeah. Okay. So another question um, that I have been asked quite often is what would my perfect weekend be? And my perfect weekend actually is what I'm going to be doing this weekend. And it's a combination of cleaning my house because I clean my house every Sunday morning. And for me, that is such a huge thing because when I was drinking, I did not... Um, I didn't clean like I should. So every Sunday, it's kind of me starting the week fresh, knowing that I'm living a new life. I'm living a sober life where I can take pride in my house. So um, it's Sunday morning, Robert and Brandon and I, we put a record on the record player, turn up the music and we just clean the house. And I absolutely love that. And then we're gonna do something a little bit different. And this is something we haven't done in a really long time but um we're gonna grab something to go like dinner and we're gonna sit down and watch a movie together and it is something that is like i by the time i quit drinking i never thought it was going to be something that we would ever be able to do again um and it's something that we're doing today and it's and i say this a lot but it's really really important to know like if you're out there and um, you're trying to make some big, huge change in your life the, for the better, you can have regrowth and you can have rebirth and you, can, you can't change the past, but you can make your own future. So it is a really, really, really important to know that because we get so hung up on like, oh my gosh, my past is horrible. So I, I, I don't have any future and that's just not the way it is. So please take me as a, a learning lesson that you can change and you can make a different future. Um, Courtney says, item of clothing you never ever wear but won't throw away. My faux leather pants. Oh my God, that's super easy for me to, to, to answer that question because I look at them every day. They're a really cool pair of the rib, rib cage Levi's in um, faux leather. And they're perfect. And I won't wear them. But I can not, for the life of me, give them away. And I'm just like, one day, Lonnie, one day, you're going to need those faux leather pants that you never wear. And um, yeah. I, I, I've had them for years and years and years, right when the rib cage style came out, I bought them in faux leather and yeah, I, you know what, every once in a while I take them out, I wipe them off, you know, get rid of the dust and I put them right back in my closet. So, and Courtney is the same way with her red faux leather pants. See, I think that sounds really cool. And I see, again, just like with my white button down, I see all these cute styles and I see all of these, um, all of these, these people just rocking it and I just can't do it. All right. Naomi wants to know my favorite item of clothing, hands down my overalls. 
I absolutely love my overalls. I love the, the simple fact that they're comfortable, yet they still kind of give a little statement of like, hey, I'm going to wear whatever I want. And I think they're just really fun to style. And, and I love my overalls. And that's probably, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think probably if I had a problem with like buying one thing, that would be um, jackets. I have a jacket problem and I live in Southern California. So I love jackets. I buy them all the time. I always buy them with the thought that, you know, maybe the next ice age is going to happen. But I have so many jackets and um, I just, I love them. And I don't know why I like jackets so much. Um, McAngel56 says, love your vest. You're inspiring. Thank you very much. This is my free people vest. And I love styling it with no top underneath now today I am back to wearing my little um my little brace to keep my shoulders back because yesterday I was really bad about wearing it and by the end of the day my back was just screaming and I'm like well Lonnie what do you think is going to happen when you don't wear your brace you're not going to stand up straight and it's super funny because yesterday Last night, I, um, I had this on and I had it super tight because I hadn't worn it during the day and my back was hurting anyway. And so I really wanted just to kind of have that chest opener. Hello, Ann Malou from Sweden. Um, you know what, Ann, I will put the link up on, um, I, I will put the link up. It's in my, my store, but I will definitely put that differently. So it's... Um, so I had my back brace super tight because I wanted to, because I don't know if you've noticed even me sitting here with the brace on, I, I my shoulders roll forward. It's just how I have, that's where my comfortable posture is that I'm trying to change. So anyway, I heard something last night. It was really weird because I have a, um, there was a my nails right there, because I have a screen door um, on my in my bedroom. So I'm sitting there in bed and, um, I, I heard something. So I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to get up and double check and make sure all the doors are locked. So it was, it was dark and I never turn on the lights because I know where everything is in my house. So I'm walking around and I'm checking the doors and I've come around the corner and Brandon's standing there. I scare him. He scares me. Well, my brace is super tight. <laughs> and apparently I had like a T-Rex fighting stance. Cause I was like, and he's like, why are you coming at me like that? And I'm like, because my shoulders are, are like pinned back. I have no arm range. And if I'm going to fight, I'm going to be like, <laughs> I'm going to fight T-Rex style. So, I mean, you have to hand it to me. Even with my shoulders pinned back, um, I still have a, a fighting spirit. But so I'm trying to improve my posture while emulating T-Rex. Tiggy says, I wear a lot of band shirts from my favorite bands, oversized sweatshirts. I'm collecting clothes for my cruise right now. Um, make people think I dress that normally. You know what? Wear whatever you want. If you want to go on a cruise in, in your band t-shirts and your oversized sweatshirts, do it. I mean, that is like, um, that is just definitely like something. Don't change. See, here's the thing, Tiggy. If you try to change your style, and you try to like implement what you think that you're supposed to be wearing on a cruise, you're going to be super uncomfortable. So I say find something that you like that represents who you are and wear that. Because I have a tendency to do that sometimes. So I'm saying this by, um, by um, example or because I've done it myself, but I'll be like, I'm going to go here. So this is how I want to represent myself. And 99% of the times I get there and I'm super uncomfortable because I'm not wearing something that is absolutely in sync with who I am. So um, it, it, it's just important just to be comfortable. And, and we get this ideology and it used to happen to me the most when I was going to San Francisco because I go to San Francisco all the time. In fact, I'm going at the end of June. But when I first started going to San Francisco, I was just starting my whole self-confidence journey. And I would just, for days, I would 
agonize over what outfit I would wear because I wanted to be cool because I thought I was going to a cool city with a cool vibe and I did not see myself the same way. So I would sit there and I would just be like, oh my gosh, you know, what, should, what can I wear? I'm going to go in the city. I'm not going to be as vibrant and as awesome as those ladies over there. And so what was happening is, is I would pick out an outfit that I was not comfortable in. I would go and I would be miserable the entire time. Or poor Robert, because Robert usually flies up there with me. I'd be like the entire time I'd be like, let's go into the store because I need to find a new shirt because this one's not fitting and it's not the right vibe. Or somebody would walk by me and I would be like, wow, that is the coolest vibe I've ever seen. I want that backpack or I need that jacket because I want to be as cool as that person. Not realizing that I probably looked fine to everybody else, but I was beating myself up on the inside because I didn't think I was cool. So long answer to that question that you didn't even ask me is the simple fact that when you go on your cruise, make sure every single thing you pack is something that represents who you are and that you're comfortable in because you're going to enjoy your cruise a whole lot more if you're comfortable with what you're wearing. Um, it's, okay, Courtney says, good advice. It's like starting a diet before vacation. Yeah, you know what? We just get in our heads and we think that we have to look a certain way. We think that we have to act a certain way. And the way that we need to look and the way we need to act is exactly like we do every single day. Now, that doesn't mean like if you're on the cruise and there's a night that you're supposed to dress up night or if you're going to have dinner with the captain, you know, dress appropriately for that. But still, at the end of the day, make sure it's something who represents who you are. I mean, I wear my Doc Martens with dresses. And if I were going to have dinner with the captain, I would probably have a formal on with tennis shoes or Doc Martens underneath. And because that's just who I am. And so just go ahead and remember that and it will make it a lot easier. Okay, Connie says, Lonnie, on a side note, my daughter found a free people lace blouse in Ross for $7.99, originally $70. Really? That's cool. You know what? I actually went to a resale shop yesterday and I filmed it, of course, and I found some really cool free people things. I cannot tell you what I found what I bought or anything like that. But you can, if you put a little energy into it, you can find some really cute free people stuff at a discount if you look in the right places. Okay, Courtney says, if you could pick a superpower, what would that, what would you pick? I would pick, I would have the superpower where I could make people stop being mean. You know, I would be like, you, if people only see their own, their own reality and people only see their own existence. And I think if I had a superpower, it would be like, boink, now you can see how other people, um, now you can see how other people struggle. And now you can see how your actions are hurting other people. And, you know, I, I would just try to, you know, just tell people to, I would have a super people where people would stop doing this and start listening more, you know? That's the kind of superpower I would want. I don't need to be invisible. I was invisible as a child, you know? I don't need to fly. I don't need any of that stuff, but I would definitely make it just so people would stop and just realize what their actions are doing to other people and um, just stop doing it. So there you go, that's my answer. Now, talking about free people stuff, I went down to Carlsbad like a month ago, I think it was. And, um, oh, Courtney says that's such a great answer. Make people see how their actions or words affect others. Yeah, because it's, we have a tendency just to talk so much and we're only, we, we talk, but we only think inward. We need to talk and, and think outward. But I went to Free People the other, like last month in Carlsbad and remember this cute little top I bought, this absolutely adorable top I bought, it's on my video, I love it, this top is amazing, and guess who walked out of the store with the wrong size? I'm gonna give you a minute to guess, you know, talk amongst yourself, come up with the answer, and try to figure out who bought the perfect denim top 
in the wrong size. Are you ready? Me. I walked out. <laughs> yeah, we're going to blame this one on Indy. I walked out of that darn store with the wrong size top. And I am so upset. But I jumped into action this morning. I found it online. I'm going to buy it online. I called free people. Um, I believe I am out. It's been too long for me to get my money back, but I can exchange this in store. So guess where we're going on Monday? We are going down to the free people store in Carlsbad and we are going to exchange this. Now, I have a question for you because what I'm going to start doing, and I talked to TikTok about this when I first started, but what I'm going to start doing on some of my videos where I go shopping is I want to do like this store versus this store. For example, this weekend, I'm going to do TJ Maxx versus Marshalls. I'm going to go to this to both stores in the same day and I'm going to see like what's TJ Maxx's makeup like today compared to Marshall's makeup. You know, what is their designer little rack like compared to the other one? And I want to do a comparison, kind of a side by side, same day comparison. So what I'm going to do on Monday when I go to Carlsbad is I'm going to do free people versus anthropology. And I'm going to see like, can you get the same thing here as you get there? Are the prices the same? Is the vibe the same? But I need more suggestions. I need to know like different stores you would like. I mean, we could do like Target versus Walmart. We can do, um, what are some other ones? We could do Ross's versus Burlington. Um, we can do, oh gosh, I I'm thinking, you know, along those lines. I mean, I could find like an off Fifth Avenue, which is kind of like Saks Fifth Avenue's version of Nordstrom's The Rack. I could do the rack versus off Fifth Avenue, but I kind of want to just, you know, incorporate that kind of um, idea into my videos because I think it would be super fun to see. So if you come up with any stores that you want me to compare, just leave me a, a message and I will put that on my list of things to do. Now, today I am putting my video up of the Free People, free people Movement Store. I went to Free People, I went to the, their main store down in San Diego, and um, they actually have two stores in the same mall. They have the Free People store, and then they also have the Free People Movement store. So I am, oh, and so I'd love to see you hit mom and pop shops. That's a really good idea, and I do like that because there's some cool smaller stores here in town. But um, I am finally putting up the video for the Free People Movement Store. So I'll be doing that today. And then what we have coming up for this week is we have a good week coming up. On Monday, we're going to be cooking. And we're going to be right there. And I'm going to cook my favorite thing to eat. And that is a favorite thing to eat. And that is cauliflower maple sriracha, maple sriracha cauliflower bowl with rice, avocado, edamame. I'm going to be putting that all together and I'm going to show you how I make that. We're going to be talking about tattoos on Tuesday. I'm not too sure what part of tattoos we're going to be talking about, but it's going to be, um, but it is going to be tattoo Tuesday. On Wednesday for our makeup, I'm going to be doing a live demonstration of the underpainting because last or this Wednesday, I did my foundation where I put the foundation on. No, the only thing I did for the underpainting was that, um, that stain. And so I'm going to show you a really easy way to contour and highlight and put your blush on and then just using a real light BB cream because that's how I put my foundation on today. So I'm going to be doing that on Wednesday. On Thursday, we're going to talk about, um, oh, Claire says we don't have those stores in the UK. Oh, I'm sorry, Claire. I mean, do you have like a Zara? Because we could do Zara versus H&M. We could do things like that. That's actually a really good one. I'll have to remember that one. Um, do, do, do. Zara versus H&M. See, I have to write these things down. On 
we, on Thursday, we usually talk about fashion. We're going to be talking about H&M fashion. I am just struggling with H&M fashion these days. So we're going to take a look at them. And, and I'm going to, you know, I'll have uh, it set up so you can see what I'm looking at. But I, I don't know. I, it just seems like for me, it's like H&M used to be my go-to. And it seems like I'm really having a hard time going and finding things that I want to get. So, and Friday, again, is going to be question and answer. Now, I really like today's question and answer because I like to talk about things like dreams and stuff like that. And this is absolutely where I want these kind of Fridays to go. It's just kind of like random, like, hey, you know what? This question is going to lead to a 10 minute discussion on something else. And I like just the open form of Fridays. So I 100 percent um, absolutely have so much fun so that is the um that's our live for today gosh that was a really quick hour so make sure y'all that if you watch the first part of that video with the free people make sure you watch it later on today when i go to um when i go to Yes, I live in Southern California. Okay, so make sure that you um, check out the video for when I go to the movement store. And then after that, I went to a resale store. Now, I'm going to tell you a little spoiler alert. When I went to the movement store, I found a really cool pair of pants. They were like a camo pant. I did not get those. But yesterday when I was at the resale shop, I found one that was so incredibly similar I bought those. And so um, it is definitely something. It's fun. It's a fun series that we're doing. Now, Connie says, hugs to you and everyone have a great weekend. Yes, absolutely. Have a great weekend. I will be back Monday in the kitchen. We are cooking and I appreciate each and every single one of you. Remember, be bright, be bold, be brave, put your shoulders back, go through the world, chin held high, direct eye contact, and just be fierce. All right, everyone, I will, I'm doing my princess weave. All right, everyone, I will see you on Monday. Bye. Bye. Oh, where am I going? I gotta find my cursor.